Welcome aboard, everybody. Dr. Peter Glidden here, your steadfast advocate for health, taking it to the streets every day, pulling back the curtain on the unbelievable fallacies brought to the public stage by conventional medical doctors, not the least of which is the latest trend to do tonsillectomies, adenoidectomies, and put in ear tubes all at the same time, three for one, to unsuspecting children of parents who are easily manipulated. Remember, your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but your medical doctor does not know what's best for you. Your medical doctor only knows what they've been trained in, and what they've been trained in is just one small piece of the pie of medical science. It's referred to as allopathic reductionism. Allopathic reductionism argues that the human body is a bag of biochemicals waiting to break. And that once the bag does break, you cannot cure it, you cannot fix it, you can only patch it and manage the problem. Your medical doctor does not practice health care. Your medical doctor practices disease management. There's a gigantic difference between the two. Your MD, by virtue of their training in allopathic reductionism, pharmaceutical centrist, reductionistic, Machiavellian medicine for a profit, lends them the notion, the foundation belief, that there is no soul, that there is no spiritual force, that the human body is a completely self-sustaining biochemical engine. Consciousness itself is a function of biochemistry. And when you're sick, your only options are to let the MDs march in with drugs and surgery, the the intention of which, intention of which, is not to fix the problem, but simply to manage your symptoms. So... We get children with chronic ear infections, chronic sore throats. What are we going to do? Well, if the check engine light in your automobile on the dashboard came on, what would you do? Would you take it to a mechanic and have them figure out the source of the problem and fix the source of the problem? Or would you simply reach behind the dashboard, snip the wires on the light, and continue to drive? Well, if you snip the wires on the light, guess what? There's no more... Uh, nothing else being brought to your attention. Well, that's one way to deal with it. It's a silly way. It's a stupid way. It's a juvenile way to do it. Quite frankly, it's dumb. And that's what the MDs do. Oh, you have a problem with your adenoids? Cut them out. Oh, you have a problem with ear infections? Let's just stick some tubes in the ear and drain that nasty fluid out. Let's not attempt to figure out what's causing the problem and fix it. Let's just sedate the child, which is dangerous, and stick tubes in the ears. Oh, that's a good idea. They're going to get sore throats, so let's cut the throat out. Oh, we can't do that. We'd kill the child, so what's the next best thing? Let's cut the tonsils out. And that's what they do. <clears throat> this is reductionistic medicine on steroids. Three for one. I don't know what the price point behind this trifecta of insanity is, but you can bet your bottom dollar it's not cheap. Remember again, your medical doctor may be the nicest person God ever created, but they're trained in a very peculiar, very old-fashioned, very outdated, very just nuts philosophy of how the body is structured together and what to do to interface with the body when that body is suffering with the chronic disease. So, They cut, they snip, they cut, they snip, and hey, guess what? You take out the tonsils, no more tonsil infections. (laughs) But this, you know, completely forgets the fact that the tonsils are part of your immune system, that the tonsils are a necessary part of your immune system, that the tonsils are there for a reason, as are the adenoids. And when the tonsils and the adenoids become inflamed, it's because something is wrong in the body. But the MD disregards this and snips the wire behind the check engine light, yanks the adenoids, yanks the tonsils, and sticks tubes in the ears. Hey, three for one. Why not? And the child is sedated. The child feels no pain. Oh, and what causes fluid accumulation in the back of the ears? The MDs will tell you it's pollution. It's pollution in the environment. That's what it is. Pollution causes inflammation behind the ear, and the tubes just haven't evolved enough to be able to drain the body appropriately, drain the inner ear appropriately. Baloney. It's nonsense brought to you by Machiavellian, monopolistic, reductionistic medicine sold to you for a profit. 
Oh, my doctor says. Well, guess what? Your doctor's an idiot. From the holistic perspective, the vast majority of the time, the reason that children get ear infections is because they have an allergic reaction to something that they are eating. An allergic reaction, not a throat swells up, give me the EpiPen or I'm going to die allergic reaction. That's called an immediate hypersensitivity reaction. I'm talking about a delayed hypersensitivity food reaction that most MDs are completely unaware of even exists, even though there have been laboratory tests which prove this for over 50 years. Again, most medical doctors, in my opinion, based on 25 years of clinical experience, are lazy. They don't keep up with the literature. They don't think outside of their own box. They just do what they were taught to do 20 years ago in medical school, and they do not pay attention. Of course, well, what the heck? You know, we're going to make some money, and this is a simple operation, simple operation. Very few children die from this operation. Very few children die from this operation. And it's simple, and it's going to make me some money, and it's going to solve the problem. Well, no, it's not going to solve the problem. It's going to clip the wires behind the light so the light doesn't come on anymore. Well, that's a good thing. It's a stupid thing. From our point of view, what causes? The uh, accumulation of fluid behind the eardrum, chronic consumption of foods that the child is allergic to and of the foods that which engender this type of reaction, most often it is the protein contained in cow's milk. That's right, cow's milk, yogurt, cheese, ice cream, anything made from cow's milk often is the culprit behind the scenes which is generating this problem. So now remember, If you, as an adult, drink an 8-ounce glass of milk, well, you're, let's say, you're 160 pounds. 8 ounces to 160 pounds is a trifling amount. If your 4-year-old drinks an 8-ounce glass of milk and the 4-year-old is mm, 30 pounds, it is going to be a lot more, 6 times as much as it would be for you. So you want to put that into comparison. Drink six eight-ounce glasses of milk. That's 48 ounces of milk. Drink 48 ounces of milk all at once and see how it makes you feel. Again, your medical doctor has not been trained to think it through. Your medical doctor has been trained to go in lockstep with what they were taught. If you can make a little extra money doing it, all the better. Now, look, I'm not against making money. I'm not. But I am against making money by rolling out ineffective, ridiculous therapeutics, the the intention of which is not to fix the flippin' problem, but simply to manage the symptoms. So a much better strategy, if you have a child with chronic ear infections, that remove cow's milk from their diet completely. Remove cow's milk from their diet completely, and there's one more thing to do. You can give a homeopathic medicine, which more often than not is effective at helping to reduce the inflammation behind the ear, which will allow the little tube, the eustachian tube, which goes into the back of the throat to drain properly, and voila, the problem is finished. But you must eliminate the food that's causing the inflammation. You must eliminate the food that's causing the inflammation. And by the way, it's the eustachian tube. There's a little tube. It goes from behind the eardrum to the bottom of your throat, to the back of your throat, and it drains the ear behind the eardrum. This is the design that nature put in place, and it's a fantastic design, but when you eat the wrong food all the time vis-a-vis cow's milk, in this case, and the derivatives thereof, that little tube becomes inflamed, and that when that little tube becomes inflamed, it closes up, and when that tube closes up, it can't drain the fluid in the ear. The fluid accumulates, and that's painful. So rather than fixing the problem, the MD sticks a tube or two in the ears. You know how painful that is? It hurts. That's why they put the child under not local anesthesia, general anesthesia, which, by the way, is a crapshoot, which is why anesthesiologists are paid, have to pay the highest amounts of malpractice insurance, because when you put a biochemical soup, a pharmaceutical soup into a human body to put that body to sleep. So the same holds true with tonsillitis and chronic sore throats, chronic swollen tonsils, chronic swollen adenoids. Do you have this problem because you have tonsils? No. 
you have the problem because your immune system is working. Your immune system has been attacked. Your immune system is overworked and underpaid. What causes chronic immune system irritation? Well, life in general. Consistent consumption of all the wrong foods also antagonize the entire system, which has a ripple effect on the immune system. But the single biggest culprit here is lack of nutrition that the immune system needs to be strong and healthy. If your body is deficient in the nutrients that your immune system needs to be strong and healthy, is your immune system going to be strong and healthy? No. It's going to be weak and weak. Unhealthy. So... A little tiny virus comes along, a little tiny bacteria comes along, and it gains a foothold, not because you have throat, not because you have tonsils or adenoids, but because your body was so weak that you were able to be taken advantage of by the microbial stress. And again, the MD's solution is to just cut the damn throat out and throw pounds of antibiotics into the body. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's just paint over the mold, folks. It'll can't see it anymore. Paint it over. Even use glidden paint. Paint it over. Guess what? You're an idiot. Your MD is an idiot. Do not listen to the nonsense. The solution, from our point of view, eliminate cow's milk. Eliminate everything made from cow's milk from the child's diet, in addition to elimination of the 10 bad foods, which is a generic general recommendation for everybody across the board. Number two. One healthy start pack per 100 pounds of body weight per month. Number three, one capsule of killer biotic a day if you're under 50 pounds. Two capsules of killer biotic a day if you're over. Get some colloidal silver, spray it into the eardrum, drop it into the ear canal, or spray it into the back of the throat every two hours while the child's awake. Voila, health returns, and you can fire your MD now. <laughs>